Hi everybody, uh, we are ready for chapter 29 today and I am coming to you from my house because uh, there's no time to do it at school because I'm always busy. So I thought I'd just bring it home and do it this evening. All right, so the last thing we talked about was Jonah, um, JB had yelled, give me the elucidator now. And Jonah raised the elucidator but only to point it at JB. No, he said. All right, so now we're on chapter 29. Angela, JB called, the taser. Instantly, Jonah saw his mistake. In a second, Angela would turn around and aim her taser at him, and they'd just reenact the scene from a few moments ago, except this time it would be Jonah writhing on the floor and then passing out, and JB scooping up the fallen elucidator. And then, what would happen then? Jonah didn't know, but he could still hear Mr. Hodge's words echoing in his brain. I can't believe they think you're on their side. You must not have told them what you want to do. What did that mean? What should Jonah do? Was there anyone he was sure he could trust? That was one question he could answer. Catherine, he called out, catch. And he tossed the elucidator into the air in an easy toss, easier than passing a basketball. He knew without turning to look that Catherine would catch it that she would hold on tightly and she would betray him, wouldn't betray him. She might make fun of him, she might roll her eyes and call him an idiot, but she would, wouldn't let go. She'd already proved that. As soon as the elucidator was in the air, Jonah took off running. JB made no attempt to stop him because he was spinning around following the arc of the elucidator. So Jonah had a clean, fast sprint to the back of the cave. He needed the speed. He needed the element of surprise if he had any prayer of wrestling the taser out of Angela's hand before she aimed it at him. He was too late. Even in the dimness of the back of the cave, Jonah could see that Angela had already turned around. In one smooth, quick move, she pulled a cartridge from her pocket, reloaded the taser, and pointed it back toward Jonah. Jonah took a stumbling step to the side just in case he had a chance of dodging the laser light and the barbs and whatever else the taser was about to send zigzagging at him. He hoped it wouldn't hurt too badly. He hoped he wouldn't scream as loudly as Gary and Mr. Hodge had. He hoped Angela held the taser steady, aiming past Jonah, aiming toward Mr. Hodge and Gary. Shoot, Jonah! JB was yelling helpfully. Thanks a lot, Jonah thought. He didn't have any hope now. He was too close to Angela, too close to reverse his course, too close for her to miss. Just as soon as she would corrected her aim and squeezed the trigger, he'd be on the ground. Angela spun toward Jonah, but she didn't squeeze the trigger. She stepped forward and glanced out toward the brighter part of the cave, though that made no sense. Surely Jonah was blocking her view. She turned the taser sideways, not pointing at anyone anymore. Then she reached over and slid the taser into Jonah's grasp. She was handing over her weapon. What? Jonah demanded, dumbfounded. Angela pressed a finger to her lips. Then she moved the finger and began to scream. No, you can't have it. Jonah's ears were river, 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 hmm, reverberating. There we go. With all that lung power released in such a small space. But already Angela was expecting him to listen. She leaned in close and whispered in his ear. I really am on your side completely. You deserve to know the truth, so pretend that you're, you captured me. Jonah stood there, or just stood there. He was so stunned, he almost dropped the taser. Maybe you should shout something about getting the ropes, Angela whispered, bending down to pick the loop coils from the, looped coils from the floor of the cave. Move it! Get those ropes now, Jonah hollered. His voice cracked. Surely that wasn't a convincing yell. But Jonah could hear J.B. calling from the lighter part of the cave. Angela, what happened? Before breaking off to warn Catherine, young lady, really? You can't press any of those buttons. You don't know what they do. What's going on? Jonah hissed at Angela. Tell me, she grimaced. There isn't time to talk. Besides, you should hear it from the experts, not me. She nudged him. Go on. Jonah started back out of the darkness. Uh-huh. Angela said. She stepped in front of him and moved her hand over his so that the end of the taser was pressed into her ribcage. Don't you dare set that off now. You're too close, she whispered. But please, make it look like it's possible that you captured me. 
Angela? JV called again, sounding even more worried. Angela dropped her hand from the taser. Together, Angela, jo Jonah and Angela stepped out into the light. He got your weapon, JV said incredulously. He overpowered you? He's a very strong young man, Angela said defensively, stronger than he looks. Well, that was an insult, wasn't it? Jonah tugged the taser more deeply into Angela's ribs. He shoved her forward more roughly than he'd intended. Maybe not quite so realistic, she muttered. Give the ropes to Chip, Jonah ordered. Uh, Jonah, I'm not a Boy Scout, Chip said. My dad said he didn't have time for all those campouts, so I don't know anything about tying knots. And here, Jonah said, slapping the taser into Chip's hands, shoot her if you have to. Anguish spread over Angela's face. Jonah could tell she wasn't acting now, either because it was Chip holding the taser and there was no way Jonah could signal Chip to let him know that she was really on their side without JB seeing as well. Jonah tied Mr. Hodges and Gary's wrist and ankles. They lay calmly now, their eyes half closed. Jonah couldn't tell if they were still dazed or if they were faking it, bid bidding their time or biding their time. He tied the knots as quickly as he could. He walked toward JB, rope still dangling from his hands. Not me too, JB asked with an great, I can't talk today, ingrating grin. I think you've gotten confused. Remember, I was the one trying to save all of you. What were you saving us from, Jonah asked in a dull voice. What were you saving us for? Tell your sister to give me the elucidator and I'll explain, JB said. Explain and maybe we'll decide that you deserve the elucidator, Jonah said. He looped the rope around JB's wrist and tied his finest knot yet. JB didn't resist. Then Jonah tied J.B.'s ankles and Angela's ankles and wrists. Someone was sniffling behind him. Oh, please, it was Ming, the girl who had temporarily been a human shield. Just open the door and let us go to our parents. My cell phone isn't working. I've been trying and trying to call the police. Once we're out of the cave, I'm sure it'll work right. Jonah hadn't even thought about cell phones, but now he noticed that just about every kid had one out. One boy near the back bench kept stabbing a finger at his phone three times, waiting, stabbing three times again, waiting. 911, Jonah thought. Of course. His knees almost gave way at the thought that a bunch of police officers in dark uniforms would soon come swarming into the cave, saving them all, saving Jonah from having to make any more choices and any more mistakes. Then Jonah realized that the reason the boy kept stabbing at the phone was that none of his calls was going through. Sure, he told Ming. You find a way to open the door and we're all out of here. No, don't, J.B. shouted. Oh, let them try, Gary said groggily from the ground. There's a keypad by the entryway. The code is 21ST. Was it a trick? Jonah turned back to J.B. What will happen if we try that code? If we open the door, he demanded. You'll see. You'll find out too much all at once, J.B. said. It might scare you. It might scare you? After everything that's already happened, J.B.'s worried about scaring us? Jonah decided to take his chances. He rushed toward the entryway, and it was as if he'd been become the Pied Piper now. Most of the other kids shoved in behind him. His finger shook as he pressed 2-1 and then S-T. An image was growing in his mind of what he might see when the door slid back. Maybe somehow Gary and Mr. Hodge had already slipped into the future. They'd step out of the cave and all the trees would be gone. The newly built houses would be ancient and falling down. That would be scary. But Jonah was braced for it. The door began to move, began moving slowly this time, like it was an ancient boulder covered with a thousand years of moss. As soon as there was a crack between the door and the wall, Jonah darted toward it, peeking out. He peeked out and saw... Nothing. Nothing. Hmm. All right. Wonder what's that really out there. It's got to be something. Can't be nothing. All right. See you later.